Um, now, the wonderful thing about standard strategy is almost regardless of what it asks, the series of steps that you would go through doesn't change. That's the kind of whole point of a standard strategy that it's a fixed set of steps that you can apply almost no matter what your complicated uh, situation problem is. So here, let me just uh, highlight some of the information that I'll probably end up needing. So this whole scaffold, it has mass of 50 kilograms. So let me call that M1, mass of M1. Oh, and given the length, call that uh, L. Uh, by two light cables. So light is code word for massless. <laughs> uh, 58 kilogram painter. So let me call that M2. Oops. Uh, stands one meter. So let me call that L2. From the left hand of the scaffold, and his paint bucket is 1.5 meter from the right end. Let me call this L3. Um, if the tension in the left cable, let's call that TL, is twice that in the right cable, call that TR, uh, find the tensions in the cables and the mass of the bucket express all answers around it one, okay. So it's a quite complicated scenario and it's a complicated scenario like this where standard strategy excels because you, um, you handle one chunk at a time that you can handle. The very first chunk is the standard strategy step number one, free body diagram. So I'm going to draw a separate free body diagram here at each step, making sure that I didn't forget a force. So this is the uh, scaffold that I will need. So I got the mass of the scaffold from which I can get gravitational force on the scaffold, M1G. Um, and I have the painter who's going to be applying a normal force on the scaffold uh, equal to M2G. Um, oh, and I guess I don't know the mass of the bucket. Uh, so that I don't have to spell out bucket each time, let me call this MB. So um, the bucket at the location of the bucket, there will be downward, again, normal force, MBG on the scaffold. Uh, so those are all downward forces. I need some upward forces. In this problem, it looks like there are two upward forces here provided by the tension. So let me call that TL and TR. Now, kind of looking at this picture and thinking through it, it looks like I will probably need to use both the set of equilibrium condition equations. So remember at static equilibrium, the equilibrium condition you have is uh, that net force is equal to zero and net torque is equal to zero. And in the previous question, I could uh, make the first uh, equation irrelevant by kind of not uh, preventing torque from depending on a particular unknown force. Now here I have two unknown forces, tension on the left and tension on the right. I can get rid of effect of one force by putting the origin right at where one of the forces are acting, but um, the other force will still continue to generate torque. So I'm gonna need to write down the, both of the equilibrium condition equations, one and two. So, all right, uh, step number two, I need to define coordinate axis. In a problem like this, comes down to choosing a center of rotation I guess I'll choose this as my center of rotation. I already marked it. Um, all right, then, um, then I, I guess that's it. Um, so all the forces are in the vertical direction, so I don't need to decompose anything. Uh, now I'm ready to write down Newton's second law equations. That is net force 
Uh, here, this time I need to carefully write down all the forces, the upward forces first, TL plus TR, and then the downward forces, minus M, um, 1G, minus M2G, minus MBG. And because it's a static equilibrium, all of this should add up to zero. Let's write down the net torque. Uh, that's gonna take a bit of a space. Oh, uh, the tension, um, the left tension generates no torque because the lever arm there is zero. The right tension, it looks like the, the lever arm there is L, the entire length of the scaffold. So, oh, oh, I need to decide on a sign convention. Um, here, let me use the other convention. Um, so I'll say counterclockwise is positive and uh, clockwise is negative. Um, this actually matches the usual angle convention better, where you say if something is moving from the positive axis upward, which is counterclockwise, that's a positive angle. But the main thing necessary here is consistency. So let's write it down. The lever arm is L, so the sign is plus, right? What we decided just now. The lever arm is L times the force, um, TR. Oops, why am I? Um, I don't know why I'm spending the uh, TR. Once again, this is the, um, the definition of torque we are using. The torque is lever arm times force. And I'm handling the direction of torque separately with the signs that I add. Okay, the, all the rest of the forces are clockwise about this point. So they are all going to get a negative sign. Let's just write them down, matching pair at a time. So minus M1 is acting at the center of the scaffold. So the lever arm should be L over two times the force M1G minus M2G, uh, the distance we were given as L2 earlier, L2 uh, M2G minus, now this one we need to figure out. We are given L3, but that's not the distance from the center of rotation. The distance from the center of rotation is this, which should be L minus L3. So L minus L3, um, M bucket G. And that should add up to zero. All right. Um, so let's just do a quick check. This is uh, what this is the trick that you want to do at the end of the final step in the standard strategy. You want to make sure that you have enough uh, equations. So you have um, the tension forces, which are unknown. You are given the masses. M1 went to oh, you are not given the mass of the bucket. So you have three. E three unknowns, but only two equations, which um, means we need more information. Ah, here it is. Uh, it says, if the tension in the left cable is twice that in the right cable. So that's giving us some information. The way to make use of any information in a physics problem is see if you can express that in terms of equation. So tension in the left cable, TL, is twice the tension in the right cable. So that's equal to 2R. All right, so now we have equations one, two, and three without introducing any new unknowns. So we are good to go. We have three equations, three unknowns. This is a solvable. Let me try to solve it quickly. Um, okay, so this is gonna be my strategy. It looks like uh, we already don't have TL in the second equation. So what I can do is I can use equation three to eliminate TL from equation one. Let me do that. Then what you end up with is zero is equal to TL uh, in terms of TR, that's two TR plus TR. So let me write that as three TR and the simplifying as I go. Minus, uh, let me factor out G. So it's M1 plus M2 plus M, B, G. Okay, that's equation one. And equation two doesn't change quite yet. Um, and I guess we'll just go systematically. 
we have, so between equation two and equation four, we have two equations and two unknowns, TR and MB. So the thing to do is a substitution. I think the easiest thing is to solve equation four for TR, plug it in into equation two, see what we get and solve that for MB. So let's, um, so solving this for TR, what you get is TR is equal to uh, sum of the masses divided by three times G. So let me plug that in into equation two to get zero is equal to, first zero I don't need to write, <laughs> um, L over three times M1 plus M2 plus MB uh, G. Uh, can I, uh, let me just write it out. Um, so minus, um, let me, um, parenthesis, <laughs> L2 over M1 plus M2 and plus, uh, let me just expand this out, L MB minus L3 MB G. And I hope you see that as you stare at this expression, we can, oops, I forgot something there. Um, there should have been L2 in front of M2. Um, I was checking the units and it didn't work out that way. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so some things cancel out from the get-go. G's cancel out, good, we don't have to deal with that. Uh, and I guess we need to solve this for MB. So let me collect the like terms. Um, correct, collecting the like terms, this is what I get. Zero is equal to, I'm just gonna collect all the terms with the MB in it. So it's L over three minus L MB. So collecting those two, I have minus two thirds L MB. So uh, I guess I'll just write down the rest. Wait, 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 I forgot the L3 MB. So it should be um, minus two thirds L plus L3 MB. Okay, now we can collect the rest of the terms. So we have, um, so plus, um, I guess I'll just do it one by one. So I have L, L over three M1 minus L over two M1. I happen to know that uh, fraction algebra arithmetic in my head. It's minus L over six M1. Um, then I have uh, uh, M2 is gonna be a bit of a mix. So I have plus L over three minus L2 M2. Um, I already did all the MBs. So I think we are done there. Okay, I guess I just solve for, um, solve for MB. So I have all these terms on the right, move them over, divide up by this uh, factor here, and then we'll be done. Um, I guess this is the point at which I might just plug in the numbers because um, I don't really see any algebraic uh, simplifications coming up. So yeah, from this point on, the, the symbols you track isn't really worthwhile. So let me just write out what those quantities are in numerical terms. So minus 3.167 meters, okay. Uh, let's combine the other term. So I have a 19 meter kilogram. All right, so to solve for MB, I uh, imagine moving this term over to the left-hand side and uh, to the left-hand side and then divide up by, um, divide up by 3.167, which is no longer negative. 
then I should get a positive answer. So the positive answer is MB is equal to, uh, I guess, 6.0. 6.0 kilogram. Let's plug in the numbers and see. Maybe I could have kept a symbol again. Some things will have canceled out. Uh, six kilograms. Oh, um, I have two more parts. Well, um, the other two parts, I'll leave that for you. Once you have the mass, then the rest is kind of working your way backward because then you have this expression for TR where the only unknown is MB that you can plug in from before. And once you have TR, then you have TL through this expression here. The rest are kind of just wrapping things up once you get the first part correct and the rest are you know, more guaranteed.